Our purpose this morning is to come together to express our solidarity and support for the brave women of Iran who are challenging the oppressive theocratic regime in that country. These women are campaigning not only to remedy the injustices that they themselves are subjected to on an almost daily basis, but also to liberate the country as a whole from one of the worst dictatorships of modern times. And as we saw from the television coverage of the recent protests in Iran, many women there are desperate for change. And we are here to express our solidarity with their aspirations. And I think we must never ever forget the contribution of women in everything that they do. Never underestimate that the extent to which women have been involved in number of protest marches that are taking place in Iran even today. We saw the type of revolution that was taking place a few years ago when women and children came along out in the street protesting against what the Mullah's regime was doing to them. And I think we need to move away from that and congratulate them for the work they've been doing in the struggle for proper democratic institution in Iran. In the 21st century, it seems bizarre to think that a woman should have to protest her right to choose her own clothing and decide on her own path in life. Overall, the widespread presence of women in these recent protests act as a message and a warning to the regime that women are a force for change who will not be stopped in their endeavours. So I'm going to leave you all with words from the past and the present and we can see how they intermesh uh, and why we must move forward uh, to uh, obtain justice not only for the women but also for those victims of that massacre. Montezari, he had the moral courage to object to what was happening in 1988. He said at the time, in my view the biggest crime in Islamic in the Islamic Republic, for which history will condemn us, has been committed at your hands, and they'll write your names as criminals in history. And this was part of uh, what he said in objecting to what Khomeini was ordering. The present, we have the Minister of Justice, so-called, addressing the Human Rights Council today. He's on EU and Swiss sanction lists. He was a member of the Death Commission in the Kazakhstan province. There is no doubt that there is a huge amount of evidence against him. If international law had any teeth, as it should, there should be no safe haven for someone such as him who is facing the gravest of crimes, including a crime against humanity. It is not long, so long ago that the suffragettes fought for women's rights to vote here in the UK. Many of them suffered and had to go to prison and lost their families and had a really hard time. But their fight in the end was worth it. Now, throughout the last 39 years, 120,000 people from the main Iranian opposition movement were executed by the Iranian regime. 30% of those were women. Khomeini issued an official decree stating that women and girls were to be raped before their execution. Can you imagine that girls of 15 and 16 and maybe younger? As well as pregnant women, uh, they were executed by the regime's authorities during the 1988 massacre of 30,000, 30,000 political prisoners in Iran. Maryam Rajavi stated this earlier this year, women have not taken to the streets to demand anything from the regime. Rather, they wish to eliminate the clerical regime. Women have not risen up to demand their own freedom alone. They have risen up to liberate the whole nation. As attested by the experience of the past 39 years since the 1979 effort at revolution, it is not possible to fulfil the most rudimentary demands of women under this regime 
from abolition of the compulsory veil to the elimination of all forms of discrimination and inequality. Women did not benefit from the game of so-called reformists versus the hardliners. Women's rights are not obtained unless by the overthrow of the clerical regime. Regime change is the right of Iranian women and the only way to achieve freedom and equality. I echo those words. Therefore, supporting the Iranian people's uprising against fundamentalism is the greatest project of our time for, for advocates of women's rights. Um, I happily endorse the recommendations in the briefing paper for the, UN gov the UK government to use its voice in the UN to support the democratic aspirations and struggles of Iranian women and men. And the Maryam Rajabi 10-point plan grounded in principles of human rights. And may uh, the time that it can be implemented be much sooner uh, and certainly not much later. Trade should equal human rights compliance. No more of this focus solely on the nuclear threat as it's viewed. Trade, any trade with Iran, as with any other nation, but let's talk about Iran here as a principal offender, any trade with Iran must cease to be a human rights free zone. I'm delighted to be here to support you uh, in this event. Um, you know, I'm dealing every day with immigration issues, um, particularly from people and women affected um, uh, on many, many different issues, but uh, because of from Iran and difficulties in returning to Iran or difficulties in staying in this country. So I know, I know the issues, the difficulties, and I'm talking to people every day. So again, I just want to say, I won't, won't keep you now because I know you're finishing, but uh, just wanted to say, you know, I'm delighted to be here. So thank you.